hello once again, everybody. Welcome to Houston City Beat Weekly. I'm Mike Acosta, along with Lisbeth Marquez, live here from the studio at Capismo Communications. Lisbeth, here we are once again. I, I had no idea you were going to be here. This uh, is uh, quite the surprise. Well, I mean, I heard that this is where you were going to be, so I felt that this was the place for me to be as well. And here you are. And here I am, live yeah. and in person. Well, we have uh, some great things that are that are happening on Houston City Beat, uh, including a festival that's coming up in less than one month from now. That's correct, and we're really excited to be a part of it. It is. Uh, Houston City Beat is going to be part of the Raise the Vote Music and Art Festival on uh, October 7th, and that's really cool. We're going to start putting out some promotional material here on Houston City Beat. John Segovia, the Houston artist, is really organizing all of this, and and we're really happy and proud to to be a part of it because it's going to do something really great for people in the, in the Houston community to really rally behind uh, to register for vote, to devote. And it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. Uh, the, the point is to be part of that process, you know, if you That's if correct. you if you are not happy with something in a political scene, well, then you know you go out there and you vote, and that's really the way that you make change happen. You can talk all you want about what you don't like, but if you're not going out there to the voting sites and putting your vote in, and your voice is not really being heard, it's more like a screaming kid, I guess, right? You know, there is a, <laughs> there is one part about the voting process that no one talks about. The importance of serving on jury duty. Oh, yeah. And when was the last time you did that? Well, Let's actually, get the county to take it note. It was <laughs> about two years ago. I had to go and serve on a, uh, I, I was not selected locally, <laughs> well, but I was there. Well, I don't see any wood to knock on over here, Lisbeth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Right there. <laughs> I got it taken care of. Don't worry. So it is important to serve on jury duty. It's very important to vote, and it's equally as important to serve on jury duty because that is one of the the hallmarks of of being a citizen of the United States is that you get uh, you get a uh, you get a fair trial, right? That's most, right. Most people. That's right. And being on serving on a jury duty is is important. So it's equally important to vote and serve on jury duty. Yeah, these are civic duties. These are privileges yes. that we have and rights that we have as U.S. citizens. So again, you know, when people go out there and I and I hear you know people complaining about they don't like this person in office, they don't like that this is happening, you know, and they they rally around and they try to get the voice out, but. You know, it really comes down to to trying to get people to to vote a certain way as a whole. And that's how real change is made in society. So we're uh, we're proud to be part. Houston City Beat is proud to be part of the Raise to Vote Arts Music and Arts Festival. That uh, once again, it'll be on Saturday, October seventh, from four p.m. to ten p.m. Uh, and there's there's going to be an art contest. There's music. There's going to be all sorts of things that are going on. And uh, we'll keep you abreast of all the the information that you need to know. We're going to have some promotional material. We're actually going to cover that festival. We're going to go out there and we film are. it yeah. and do some interviews with the artists, and we'll see them featured here on Houston City Beat. So I'm looking forward to it. As am I. It's going to be it's going to be a great time. Yeah, and John Segovia, who's really uh, the organizer for this, is just doing a fantastic job. I mean, he really knows his stuff. He's grown this festival. I think this is the the second year that that he has uh, undertaken this organization, uh, and it's just really on the ball. When he talked to us and kind of shared a vision as to what he was trying to do uh, in getting this this uh, festival out there for people to really become a part of and enjoy, uh, you know, it's it's just really really fantastic so we're looking forward to to being part of that and so uh now you know we have our another edition of your favorite segment i mean i know we were talking about this festival here just uh, it's some great stuff going on there but it's time for coco q tales yes my one of my favorite segments with the houston city beat weekly and as an update last i think Last week or the week before that, we featured Jasmine, who uh, was actually adopted. So we're really happy for Jasmine. She has a, a new family. And uh, this week, we've got another furry friend to share with you. Hi, everyone. Meet Kane. Kane is here at Caps, and he's waiting for his forever family to come and adopt him. He's a really sweet dog. 
and he's very energetic and loves to go exploring and smell all kinds of new things. So come out here and meet Kane and take him home. Good boy. Good boy. Aw. Good sweet baby. So he wants to go exploring. So I'll see y'all later. Well, that was really cool. There was another segment of Coco Cute Tales, and you love this. I mean, this is a fantastic initiative that you are doing here on Houston City Beat Weekly. Well, thank you. I, I loved Kane, super sweet dog. And again, there's a lot of dogs, cats. They have bunnies. hamsters. <laughs> hamsters, bunnies. Yeah. I mean, all sorts of, yeah. of little furry friends over at Citizens for Animal Protection. They don't have elephants or giraffes, so you have to go to the zoo if you want to see those. <laughs> But there's a lot of acute dogs and cats that need homes. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, it's great. Uh, catforpets.org is the site. It's right there on the screen. If you want to learn more on how you can adopt a furry pet that you see here on Houston City Beat, or, you know, by the time you get there, you know, uh, that puppy might be gone. But, but there will be others. They have a whole bunch of others. Uh, Citizens for Animal Protection and, and Freddie, who's over there that we, we have met with and collaborated with. He's doing a fantastic job and really getting the message out. And we're just glad to to be able to be part of it. Absolutely. So, Mike. Yeah. I hear that you brought some show and tell. Well, well, we did. We are we right did. here. You can take a look at this. Um, these. There's, there's one for you. They're right Wait, there. I'd rather wear the one without the chin. I'd rather wear the one without the without chin the chin scrap, without the chin scrap. Okay. okay. You. So you're gonna put my uh, it my seems big more, my big head into this. It seems more <laughs> hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. So, so what we're doing here, and and we uh, we want to have a a very special shout out to Tom Kennedy's collectibles oh, uh, here on Houston. Say so that looks. Look at this. You look like you're ready to go. Could so, I wear this for Halloween? You well, I don't know. As long as you don't drop it, it is a you know fifty plus year old artifact. It's a you know, little uncomfortable. Well, I don't think it was designed to actually go into space. What what you're looking at, folks, here are two of the space helmets from the Astrodome back in the late 60s and mid 60s the uh, yeah. grounds crew who used to take good. care of the the uh, Astros <laughs> baseball field <laughs> they here let me let me see Niner they uh, I don't know if this will fit around look at that. yeah <laughs> no it's not going to fit so anyway yeah, that's about as good. <laughs> <laughs> this is really insane. Wow, okay, it? maybe you should this wear this is, one this is, okay, instead. Let's see, here. let's see. Let's take a look at this here. Wow. We're going to switch off helmets here. They don't really do this in NASA uh, when the astronauts go to space. There we true. go. Is this better? Let's see. Let's put the did glasses you, did you back clean on. clean this? Yes, these are... <laughs> Somehow, I feel that this is going to come back and and, uh, and, and bite this. me. Yeah. Ew. So, <laughs> it looks splendid on you. I Look can't do it. I'm wow. sorry. Wow. I'm well, somewhat I, germaphobic. Well, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it off here. But okay. these are two uh, authentic space helmets from uh, the Astrodome, and uh, and we wanted to to bring these out because we want to occasionally bring in one of our our new sponsors, Tom Kennedy's Collectibles. And Tom Kennedy is a long time collector. Uh, he used to, and, and also a, a, a media personality as well. Tom Kennedy used to be a newspaper columnist for the uh, the Houston Post, and and uh, he was like the, I want to call him the. the and these are my words. He's like the dean of the media at City Hall, and he really used to be in charge of uh, the, the beginning and the ending of the the mayor's press conferences. And he was he was right there on the scene for many years. But then Tom Kennedy also. Uh, became a, a memorabilia collector. And when I was a teenager, I used to go visit him at the Antique Center of Texas and started acquiring these things from the, the 1960s. And, and me being a, a baseball and Astros fan, an Astrodome fan, uh, I managed to to get a lot of those things from his, uh, his store. Uh, it's funny, I told him that I bought a ticket to the first game in the Astrodome. Uh, for like 25 bucks back in like 1990 and he just he just looked at it, he's like oh i can't believe you got it for 25 dollars <laughs> because you know now these tickets are, are worth you know uh, a few hundred a couple hundred dollars at at least but but back then you know i i saw this ticket that he had and it had 25 dollars and i think i had some birthday money on me and and we got it so uh <laughs> this we wanted to bring these space helmets out and, and talk a little bit about tom kennedy uh if you are interested in 
in, in uh, memorabilia like that, uh, contact Tom Kennedy directly. You can go over to the Rummel Creek uh, Antiques Center over there off of Memorial Drive on the west side of Houston, or just drop us a line at info at HoustonCityBeat.com and we can get you in touch with Tom Kennedy and his collectibles and, and just a great guy to, to know. You know, it would be cool if we could uh, interview Tom Kennedy. Well, we'll have him on here and, and yeah. uh, you know, okay, let's it, do that. it'll probably be a, a longer show <laughs> because once well, we get going, we just we just continue talking on. You, you? Know? really? No. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. But look at this. I mean, can you imagine uh, wearing this? You know, so, so you know, every, the theme. I can't imagine because I did wear it. <laughs> you just it. did it. So, you know, the theme in the Astrodome uh, was space, right? You yeah. know, the Astros and everything. You know, they had the galaxy gift shop the uh uh you know everything had a space theme in the astrodome in the early years because nasa was in its infancy and they, they that was the brand that they went with which was really great uh, but can you imagine wearing these in a flight suit on the field and you know at first the astrodome had grass and then they replaced it with the astroturf but the guys were all wearing these flight suits like astronauts you know and they were called earthmen a little hot. Yeah. It, it, well, you know, they were indoors. Yeah, I mean, but they, still, it's a little hot. It, it Imagine is. wearing this all day long. You know, perhaps maybe we should get you an orange flight suit and you can come back and maybe we can have you do I, the yard or something. You couldn't see me here behind the... <laughs> I would blend into the into the seats behind us. Yeah. So anyway, these, these, uh, these space uh, helmets here are actually really... And we have two different ones here. And the one actually still has the... Uh, the chin guard on it, and it has kind of a blue outline. Uh, this one has the black, and, and most of these that we've seen over the years have had this this black trim on it. But there are some that had uh, the the blue trim, and they are uh, pretty rare. You don't see these out there um, as as uh, you know collectible pieces. They're not out there every day. I mean, I think I've I've seen the stuff on maybe every once in a while on eBay. Uh, but these are, are really cool. And, you know, it's a it's a really great piece of Houston history is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. I mean, these these are really neat because it kind of goes back to that time period, the space age, the beginning of the space age. You know, the, the Gemini program was with NASA. And that's when they were sending two astronauts into space, uh, the the, the uh, opening of the Astrodome and, you know, the, the Cole 45s became the Astros. And it was it was really a special time in Houston. And, and you know, there are some people out there that, that probably feel that this is all a little hokey, you know, and everything. But but this, you know, this is something that, that was very special in Houston and ties to Houston history. And a lot of people still remember it. And and I'm sure that there are some younger viewers out there who see this and are probably like, that's pretty cool. It is actually pretty cool if you think about the, the time period. And, you know, I might put it back on here in a little bit. And um, you maybe know. you could drive with it. Can you can you drive with it on? Is that I, a thing? I'm not going to drive with it. No, no, no I'm not oh, going to okay. drive with it. I don't think I don't think it would be uh, safe if I <laughs> if I drove with it. But, you know, perhaps maybe for the Halloween costume or something, you know, then we can maybe we can be earth people in action and we can just well, manicure the field the only thing i know is that i'm taking that one without the chin guard i'm not interested in wearing this so i, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't you know. can undo the chin guard in there you know i don't think you Possibly. have to, to have it but uh but yeah, these these are special part of history in in Houston, and uh, and once again, we we want to uh, to give the shout out to Tom Kennedy's collectibles. Again, if you would like to to visit, he has a shop off of Memorial Drive in Rummel Creek Village, uh, the antique store that is over there, uh, and then just give us a, send us an email if you're interested in contacting uh, Tom Kennedy. He has a network of uh, antique collectors. So if even if you're not looking for sports memorabilia or something like that. He actually can put you into contact with people that are selling antique furniture, antique art. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things. He knows a lot of people. Tom Kennedy has been in Houston forever. And uh, so we want to we want to thank him for being part of Houston City Beat. Tom Kennedy's collectibles here on Houston City Beat. Great. Awesome. And that'll do it for this week's edition of Houston City Beat Weekly. Once again, for Lisbeth Marquez, I'm Mike Acosta. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. 